to your late mother. 20th, right? 20th? Yes, yes. My mother's birthday is today. Oh, wow. And it's the first birthday that she's, I, I, like, I lost her in January, right before I got the job here from COVID. So today's her birthday too. So it yeah, wouldn't be, I mean, wouldn't be here obviously if it wasn't. Yeah, no, sure, man. I'm you know, sorry. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it. I mean, it's blessed to have a mother. So that's awesome. You want me to put stop? <laughs> It's actually saying one of Going over some stuff uh, this morning, I saw when Audi didn't start on the special teams, but he's now been, you know, 15, 16 plays out for you guys. How's he doing on the special teams? Continue to grow. Um, He's an integral part to our team when it comes to defense or special teams. And having the ability to have his lane size and speed on the field um, helps us with uh, matchups in the return game and coverage game. So he's continuing to grow. Uh, really appreciate the, how his effort at practice and games and how detailed he is in the meeting room. We, we haven't seen you since the Jets game. Yes, sir. Uh, leverage on the football. That's the biggest thing. Leverage on the football and then guys getting off blocks. It's our, it's our responsibility to want to keep leverage on the football. You know, before the ball is kicked, there's five guys on each side of the football. Ideally, that's how you want to finish on the football, whether it's a defensive play, you know, a defensive play like for Coach Pease, or even on a special teams, a coverage play. You want to finish with, try to get five guys on each side of the ball. Most times when big returns happen, you have like two guys on one side of the ball and nine or eight guys on the other side. So we had lost leverage from our kick side, our right side of our kickoff coverage. Guys weren't getting over the top, getting to the feet of the returner. And then we had a guy spin out of his block, lost vision on the returner. And then we had a, somebody lose leverage on the returner, last case situation. Great uh, effort by Darren Hall to come from the backside to give our defense a chance, but we have to be better when it comes to that. So the basic details, the basic fundamentals that we have on our kickoff coverage, we got to continue to grow and get better, and we get better with reps. It seems like they're going to waddle on the return game in Miami. They had Grant earlier. Is the, you know, what, what challenges Waddle present for your return game? You know, D-Led, you know, Waddle coming out, he, dynamic dual returner. Uh, he could get go east-west. He could get to the edge of your coverage units immediately with his speed and his fearless running, and he could get north-south too. So we had to do a great job of leveraging the football and making him uh, you know, stop his feet, making him change directions, and we got to get to the feet of him and also to attack the football when we have that opportunity. Then you were talking about, I think, CJ Green got spun really the wrong way. Is that a guy trying to make a read, or is that just part of the game and it happens and like, there's not much you can really do about it? Well, ideally, you know, when you're playing, going to football and you're going to attack the football, you want to keep your eyes on the football. As soon as you spin out of a, a block or something, you lose vision on the football. Therefore, it is an opportunity for you to lose leverage or guess. And defensively, we're more in a reactionary phase where we've got to react off blocks and the ball carrier. And then when you put yourself in a position where you have to guess, most likely you're probably going to guess wrong. So rather than keeping your leverage and being disciplined so you could then be aggressive when you get the opportunity to, to feed a block or play the ball carrier. Is that, is that something that is, is, is the second half, because both these times in the second half, is there yes, something that's, that's happening at the start of the second half, or is that just coincidence? That the common denominator is the men in our room, including myself. We got to do a better job of playing with better speed, better strain and coverage, being more physical at the point of attack, getting off blocks, and finishing on the ball carrier. That's what it comes down to. There's no like, you know, rocket science to it. It's just us doing our job. When big plays happen, you know, in, in the game of football, it's usually mistakes. And how does a team capitalize off those mistakes? And it's the NFL. Everybody gets paid. So if you make a mistake, you're giving that, the other team an opportunity to win that down. Mm -hmm. how, how minute are, are these kind of tweaks that you feel like they need to make? They're my, they, they are minute, but special teams is a one-down phase, you know, one-down play. Offensively, or let's say defensively, you give up an explosive run for 15, 20 yards, you, you have another down 
on special teams, that is the down. So even though it is minute, but it can lead to a large outcome on that play. So having our players understand, you know, doing our job and being great at our responsibilities to allow the person next to them to do their job at a high level. So just doing our job and holding each other accountable. And we look forward to that challenge this week. Yes, one, he does a great job leading by example, and he's more of a one-on-one, -on -one, speak to you know, players in the meeting. Uh, we, but we have a, a number of players that do a great job of leading by example, speaking up in meetings. Our meetings are player-driven. You know, I don't like to sit up there, or myself or Coach Hoff, to sit up there and speak the whole time because the players, our players in our room bring the calls to life when it comes to the, the schemes are relevant. It's all about our players, putting our players in the best position to go out there and make plays. And the peer-to-peer -peer accountability and the peer-to-peer -peer leadership is bigger than anything that I say in the room because they're playing with each other and are playing for each other on the field. So I always, I believe, you know, for our room, that's big for our players to have that dialect and, and it allows them, too, to have ownership in what, what we are doing on special teams. I mean, I always want to do a better job in anything that we do for our players on special teams. We only continue to get better with reps. We got to just be more consistent in the details, like Tori was talking about, this minute details, so it can lead to bigger outcomes. Because there's been a couple of plays where we've been one block away, one missed tackle away. And we got to understand, and we do understand, and we will get better at that, of making those those fine adjustments to those details, have an urgency with the details so we can, one, put our offense in great field position and then control field position for our defense to let our defense go out there and play, you know, just like we did versus the Giants. We did, went down there, down the punt, all right, flipped that around. Defense did a great job getting off the field. We had them in a backed-up punt situation. We made them, one, also, two, force a timeout. They punt the ball. We get the ball past the 50-yard line. We're already in field goal position. So those things, those little things add up that help complement our offense and defense. And also, too, there might be times where we got to be the spark for our offense and defense. So that big picture of that happening. Now, will it change overnight? The expectation is, yeah, we want to change everything overnight and be the best overnight. But... In order for us to change stuff, we got to continually get better day in and day out. And there's going to be a little bit of failures for us to have great growth in that room when it comes to special teams. So guys are growing, and they continue to get better. They continue to understand the philosophy and the details and what we're doing on special teams. And it's a great opportunity this week to move, move forward, move ahead, and get an opportunity to start this week 1-0. When you have Darius on special teams. Yes, sir. Sorry, Darius on practice squad at the moment. But is there something that he can Again, our roster's always developing, always changing and growing. We're always looking to better our roster, whether it's the practice squad or the 53-man roster. Um, guys that we bring in, you know, at any given time, if guys are on practice squad, they might have – they're always one play away, one injury away, one COVID test away from being activated. So we're just trying to get the best guys in here to see who can help us, both offense, defense, and special teams. And the special teams part of it, you know, Bates, he brings a lot of experience and knowledge to the game and leadership when it comes to playing special teams. And he's played for a lot of different coaches, played for a lot of good special teams coaches too as well. So, you know, he off the field and on the field, he brings, you know, great energy, juice, physicality, um, experience, football savvy, football awareness. So those things he brings to the table. So, but again, every day we're looking to better our roster did when you, it comes to that. Have you had experience with him before? Because obviously between you and him, I feel like you probably cover at least half the team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, that's funny. Uh, I will say I've coached against him numerous times. My first year in the league, I was with the Chargers. And he was I coached against him two times a season when he was with the Raiders. And then, then on he went to go play for the uh, Titans. I've always admired him from a distance, watching how he plays the game, how physical he is, and how he plays with great effort. I truly believe great plays are made from great effort, you know, on the field. Offense, defense, or special teams. And seeing anybody that plays with great effort and, and they try to finish the, the, to the echo of the whistle, those are guys that you admire, especially on special teams phases. Punch right last week. He had a miss hit on the first one. And the second one, that's a flopper that you all were forcing a fair catch on. 
Okay. Yes, sir. Right, okay. So how's Dustin hitting the ball? Uh, as you all are going into this game. You know, Dustin's been doing a great job this week. You know, on Monday and Wednesday, he had opportunities to get out there, get back on the field. Uh, look forward to him punting at a high level this this weekend when we go and uh, play our game. You know, he has miss hit on that first punt, but it's all about coming back and being able to get us in a plus 50 situation to get us a, down the punt down there around the 10-yard line and give our defense a chance. For that offense, whoever we're going against that week was the Jets that forced them to go 90 yards rather than hitting a touchback in 80 yards, 10-yard difference. So he continues to get better reps. He's been doing a great job in the room, meeting rooms, um, working on his technique, getting back in the swing of things. And yesterday he had a great, great workout. When we were talking to Arthur yesterday. He was, we were talk, asking him about Richie Grant and you know more significant playing time mm-hmm. on defense. And he was like, you know, the conversations about why he's not getting in on defense versus why he is, et cetera, et cetera. But people are overlooking what he's doing on special teams. And mm-hmm. from your perspective, what are we overlooking that he is contributing? I know it's just his athletic ability and his versatility and his competitiveness that he brings to the game. You know, special teams, there's individuals that could get overlooked because it's 22 guys covering a lot of ground on, on one particular play. And for watching him and his, his impact that he has when he's on the field and then there's, when there's times when he's not on the field, the impact that he has when he's not out there, you know, and when we're missing him. Is, is drastic, and he's been doing a good job of continuing to get better. You know, evaluated him coming out of college. You know, f- physical player, plays a great effort, athletic, um, highly competitive. He does a great job in those things. And, you know, sometimes people look at playmakers or just the guys that have the ball or just making tackles. They don't talk about the guys that are uh, making those significant blocks on punt protection or on kickoff return or on punt return, those things. And when we talk about the return game, it's not just one playmaker with the ball in his hands. We have 10 other guys that are playmakers out there because it, it takes a real selfless person to go out there and make that block for, the, for a person that's carrying the football. And that guy's carrying the ball. He's carrying the fate of our organization. So being able to, Richie going out there and making those blocks and, you know, contributing in that aspect and five phases on special teams, if you include field goal block, he's been great. And he gives great effort every single time. And that's what we appreciate with him in that room. Is there a, a moment specifically that you look back over the first five games where you're like, I like what I saw there? Like, if I were to go pull up one of the games, is there one specific moment that it's like, that was an overlooked moment that he, he made the block necessary to, to do that? I mean, you could look at there was a double team block that we had versus Washington. Him and uh, Gallman were double teaming uh, number 47 from Washington. It was a physical block that opened up the middle of the field. He does a good job of that. Punt Pro, he's been he's been more consistent with that. You know, just staying inside out on his blocks and getting out in coverage. It's those little things that people overlook when it comes to his position, what he plays. Um, punt return, blocking. I try to get him matched up on some of their better players because we trust and we believe in his athletic ability, his competitiveness, and his toughness when it comes to playing that position. And then kickoff coverage, you know, I always look, one of my favorite plays for him is his first kickoff of this uh, preseason versus the Titans. He comes downfield, gets over the top of block, Rich, uh, Avery sets it up, and he makes a tackle inside the 20. So my challenge for him is always consistently bringing that energy and that juice and that physical mindset and his, his great attitude that he has, because he's very contagious when you talk to him, um, bringing that day in and day out, being consistent with that. That's the opportunity if, you want, if a player wants to be great at this level, it's about the consistency of doing that day in and day out. And those other things off the field, how you uh, approach the game, um, how you, you're meeting, what are you watching on film? He does a great job of coming in and getting extra meeting times when it comes to those things, as to all of our players. But I'm just, right now, I know we're talking about Richie, but he's, he's been working on that. And he, he knows whatever his role is on defense or special teams, he's going to go out there and do his job at a high level to help the team. Anything else? All right. All right. Yes, take care. Thank you.